Thanks very much, Ross. It is Judgment Day 5, and there is such a lot to be judged when it comes to top four positions, in particular at the end of the season. And the Ospreys are the one who are battling. The Blues, well, injuries in Belfast last week means no Sam Warburton. Nick Williams, a totally different type of replacement. George Earl's injury means Macaulay Cook is back. And Christian Dacey's recovered from injury to be at hooker. Blaine Scully's nasty elbow dislocation allows Matthew Morgan at fullback with Reen Williams on the wing. Lilo and Halaholo, outstanding last week. Cuthbert recovering some form as well. Bradley Davis makes a first league start since injuring his knee in October. James King takes over from Ollie Cracknell on the blind side. Former Springbok Brian Mujati makes it five in a row. Dan Bigger recovering from last week's knock on the head. So Sam Davis reverses to 10. And Dan Evans to his more familiar role of fullback. Ashley Beck back after missing the last three weeks. Two strong benches. Shingler, the league's leading point scorer. Sean Bennett has impressed. Adron, Haberfield, Fonatier, potential impact players for the Ospreys. Andrew Brace of Ireland, the man in charge for a huge occasion oh, in the stadium. The roof shut and the atmosphere building up. It's not often you see the Ospreys on the back of a couple of defeats, but that's where they are now, hanging on to the shirt tails of Leinster and Munster, with the Ospreys and Scarlets hoping for semi final fixtures come the end of the season. Two more to go, and this one, such a big impact on the whole season. Lions places, Welsh team places up for grabs. Points up for grabs as well for the teams in the Pro 12. David Howells gathers safely. Rhys Webb directing traffic around him. And Dan Baker, one of the forgotten men as far as Wales is concerned. Take him back, fellas. Sam Davis, long downfield, picked up by Matthew Morgan, weighing up the options, running is what he wants to do, runs into the Ospreys' defence, Lloyd Williams, Dacey. Tackle now, White. Well, we've got two teams who want to play rugby, as we saw from the Blues in the Kingspan Release in move. Ravenhill last week. Navidi. Alaholo, straight out to Reed Williams. Had a start at fullback last week, but it didn't last very long with the injury to Blaine Scully. Ellis Jenkins. Anscombe, danger man from Belfast, Reynold Lilo. Plenty of possession stop, stop. in the opening couple of minutes for the Cardiff Blues. As Hoyata, though, is driven step way the back line, in the tackle. Step off the line. Step off the line. Try to build again through Nick Williams. Step off the line. Strong right. Morgan looking for that step, almost slipped through. Jenkins, Green Williams into the 22, keeps it in field as well. Stay wide, stay. Made sure he wasn't dying over the touchline. Macaulay Cook. Very enterprising start from the Blues. Halaholo. Between the two back rowers, and in the end, a disappointing end to a promising start, but uh, two minutes of keep ball from the Blues, Martin. I'll let you catch your breath here, Charlo. That was, uh, that was a great start from the Blues. A very, very interesting matchup today. You look at the Ospreys, like you touched upon at the start, Charlo. You know, we've never seen them so out of form. And the Blues off the back of the best performance of the season so far last week. So a fantastic start and it should be a fantastic game and a fascinating game as well. well it's going to carry on like that. I'm going to end up sounding like <laughs> Sam Warburton, I think. Wait, eight. It's one stop, nine. Webb biding his time. Out. Cuthbert stepped over the touchline and in fact had done it before taking the ball so he did it well which means the ball was out in the full yeah he said he did it well Charles. I'm not quite sure he realised what was going on there but uh, it's worked out well for the Blues 
and, char- and characteris- characteristic mistake from Reese Webb. He was just so good with his box kicks. Okay. And hold there. Back six. Back ten. Ten. Wait. Ellis Jenkins eventually. Nick Williams in midfield, straight at Baker, James King with the assist for the tackle, getting Jenkins. The Blues back where they started, looking to build inside the Osprey 22. Faufelice. Anscom, inside run from Lilo. Again, it's James King who's doing a lot of the defending work. Struggling to get any pressure on the ball, the Ospreys is so clean for Lloyd Williams at the minute. Such a quick ball. Tipperick trying to Tackle keep Halaholo on his feet, but he's got the ground. Wait, no five. Jenkins to Cuthbert. Ripped by Reese Webb. And line out, Jamie. Yeah, I quite like the way uh, the Ospreys are defending the blue centres at the minute. They're kind of waiting for them to step, they're not rushing out the line, they're being quite patient. Um, and you know Lilo and Halaholo are gonna are gonna try and beat you on your inside shoulder and, and the, the Osprey has been very patient, they defend it very well at present. On the line ten not contesting the line out looking just to drive them back but Daisy's in a good position there very well played by Christian Daisy and as they're expecting a second drive the hooker has snuck over in the corner yeah nothing more than he deserved the Blues had totally dominated the first five minutes of this match so it was a good strip by Reese Webb which led to the Blues line out I'm not sure what happened to the Ospreys defence there but they split off getting Jenkins in front of Daisy and this man knows his way to the try line, scores so many tries for the Blues, just peels off. Scott Baldwin, ball watching, doesn't, not quite sure who's got the ball, where the ball is. And that's a great finish, so great start from the Blues. Well, it's five minutes they've dominated and five points they've come away with. They see back after injury. Marking it with his fifth league try of the season. So I'm touched the ball yet, today. The Ospreys, apart from uh, Paul Crick from Reese Webb. That was great control from the Blues pack. Gareth Anscombe. Taking over the kicking duties with Stephen Shingler on the bench. And yes, he's got there with the help of the post. I'm not quite sure which side of the crossbar is going to drop. But the two touch judges had a look. And five becomes seven. Yeah, it's a great kick from Anscombe. Well, the perfect start for the Blues. And no nonsense from Matthew Morgan. Ball safely off the park and just realign on halfway. On your front man. Just fading at the last, on your front but man. Is in your comp. inside that post. That was interesting. <laughs> Did that kick actually go over? Yeah. For, well, we just didn't see that again. It looked from the first look there, didn't go over, but I suppose the touch judges are the closer than this. And they perfectly paced Gwyn Morris and Sean Gallagher. Around the back comes David Howells. Fine. Didn't survive it. Thornton. Good hit Away by now. Felice. Yeah, he's not the guy you want to try and run into, Felice. So they've won a penalty, she hasn't got away, but you've got to try and use footwork on someone like Felice. 
good footwork by Keelan Giles though. And support coming. Sam Davis to Dan Evans. Good pick up on the hoof by Scott Baldwin. Davis. Beck. Wait now. Ashley Beck. Over. Who is nursed these days. Oh, lovely hands by Tipperick to the shame. It went forward from Makavesi. Well, they both come to play, haven't they, Charlo? They both look into the offloads. It's a great initial bit from Keelan Giles to put Reese Webb away. Just tried the miracle ball. Yes, yeah, actually come off. Just glanced off Alex Cuthbert's hip and gone forward, if you look at that very closely again. But you can see what he was trying to do, Matt Avezi. Great pick-up from Tipperick. Time off. I enjoyed that from Keelan Giles there. They obviously had the... Uh... Advantage and he, you know, took the ball in his hand. So look at this again. Did that go over? No, it didn't. <laughs> How have they given that? Well, well, that's an interesting one. Can the TMO come in for that now, Charlo? I'm not sure right, if it's a bit late. It's, it's gone. gone. He's given it. So if the Blues win this by two points, okay, there's going to be much, too many voices. A pro. Let's go. Okay. I thought they were sponsored by Specs over there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is DC's try. You can see they keep control, break. Yeah, the the Ospreys probably thought they'd done well because they That's splintered the Blues now. pack, but DC okay. knew where he was and a great finish. Yeah, they are, got goal in technology in football these days, haven't they? That's a shocker, Five. isn't it, from the test judges you've got? Set. Stay ball. Yeah. Stay up one. Okay, nine. Good scrum from the Blues. Nine. Lloyd right, Williams turned Wait. ready to feed Anscombe. Stay eight, eight. The Ospreys back now. three in position. Again, it's that how foul feel he say? There's only one winner there, isn't it? Full back <laughs> running straight. Don't want to run to no. Giles gets straight in the traffic. Dan Evans. Thornton. Williams looking Seems to get good. over the ball, and he has done. Superb work by the number eight. A couple of quick passes, Ellis Jenkins trying a James Davis style kick through, but it's Tipperick who's after it. Matthew Morgan, the quickest of the three, and just about getting a hand to it. Yeah, poor decision from Alex Jenkins there. Any turnover ball, keep the ball in hand. He's gone for the grubber downfield, you can see what he was trying to do. For ricochet. Now, man, Tipperick, he's never far from the ball. Great cover from Matthew Morgan. Great steal from Nick Williams. He's so good at this. So difficult to move. All behind, fellas. At this stage, you just need to keep it in hand. He's gone with the wrong foot as well. I understand the law. Thank you. Now, did Tipperick have the legs of Anscombe? It was a close one, but Matthew Morgan was back there. No, I think they both had that. He's quick, Tipperick. But here he is. Here's Felice. Boom. Matavesi. Release now! Baldwin. And away now, tackler. Andrew Brace thinking about giving the decision against the Blues for not rolling away. Sam Davis looking to weave his way through. Dan Evans to Ashley Beck. Great feet by Beck. Cuthbert stuck to his task well. And the ball turned over to Navidi. Wait on, White. Morgan. It's a chance here. Out wide to Alaholo. It's Nilo, sorry. Back inside to Matthew Morgan. Oh, Reen Williams free on the outside, but they couldn't get the ball to him. Good pick up by Daisy Felice. That was certainly a chance for the Blues. Anscombe, Lilo, Macaulay Cook, again Green Williams finding a bit of space but the ball not finding him. 
Nick Williams with a carry. Jenkins. Good move. Good pressure from the Blues. Can they finish it? Oh, it's an interception oh, by Matavesi. He's got Keelan Giles outside him. Give it. Giles without the legs, but he hasn't seen him. Oh, dear me. That was all over the place from Josh Matavesi. Knew he didn't have the legs. Didn't spot Giles until he had come inside and then put the ball where the winger was. Well, I'll be honest with you. When Matavesi made that interception, then they, I wasn't giving him very good odds to go all the way. But Keelan Giles was on his outside. Whether he was calling for it, I'm not sure, but... It's great cover from the Blues, actually. They reacted really well and got back. It's an all or nothing read, this yeah. one. Try time if he doesn't make it. Hey, Giles, he's, he's screaming, he's screaming. Doesn't seem to be going full pace there, Keelan Giles. It's too late then, the cover was there. But like Jamie says, you know, if he doesn't take that matter of ages, it's probably a try for the Blues. It's a long run, isn't it, for uh, inside centre? I'm sure you'd have got the gym, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Real fridge was on his back then, Josh. <laughs> nice line, I should wear. Good take by Giles, well controlled. Jenkins. Oh. Yeah, it's really interesting though, the first 30 minutes, the amount of pressure the Blues are getting on the tackle area for the Ospreys. But conversely, when the Blues have got the ball, they're in total control of that tackle area, and it's so clean for Lloyd Williams. You know, that time he's just gone. Just penalise Ellis Jenkins, but that's just the pressure the Blues are trying to put on that tackle area. It's a great kick. Yeah, here we go. See Ellis Jenkins. It's Lee Lowe, he's in there trying to spoil. He does, he gets his hands on the ball. Yeah, and Ellis Jenkins, he needs to come from the hindmost foot there. He's just beside the ruck, so correct call for Mr. Brace. 9-10. Well, this is as close as the Ospreys have been in the opening quarter of an hour. Wait, seven. Back to Dan Baker from Rory Thornton. Wait. Bradley Davis against his former team. Webb sees front row boys ready and waiting. Sam Davis. Oh. Ellis Jenkins is there quicker than anybody again. Now here's a chance to go again. Alaholo and Lilo, Matthew Morgan try to get it out to Reed Williams, but the presence of Keelan Giles just enough. Yeah, good defence from Keelan Giles. Read that really well. I think Sam Davis got his stud stuck in the ground and tripped over. Great reactions from Ellis Jenkins. They mentioned him before the game. He had a really good game last week out in Belfast. He beat. Sniffing around the ball, it's a fascinating matchup with Tiprick. And this is just a really good read from Keelan Giles. Davis, flat ball. Matavesi. Two move. Don't hold him in. Sam Davis. Well held by Macaulay Cook. Mujati. Wait. So rock speed is at one second slow for the yeah. Ospreys at the moment, isn't it? It's making all the difference. It makes all the difference. Put yourself there, you've got to get yourself out. Yeah, some of the Blues are going to have to be very careful. Reese Bird, one of the best in the game at milking penalties in the tackle area, and boy, bodies are on the wrong side. It's so difficult, and Macaulay Cook's made the tackle. He'll say he was trapped in there, couldn't get out. They need points on the board, the Ospreys, and they need to get into the game. It's interesting when you, you mentioned um, Ellis Jenkins there, Martin. You've got Josh Navidi and Ellis, well, who could both play six or seven, and he's been pretty much everywhere in the opening stages. Yeah, look, for me, I think Josh Navidi is a better six than seven. You know, Ellis Jenkins is superb. If you watch him during the game, his body position at ruck time, he's so, he gets over the ball so well. So they have, they've got a bit of a lightweight pack when you look at the Blues, but they're very, very mobile today, and Danny Wilson touched upon it before at the top of the show that they need to play an open expansive game they're certainly trying to do that and the Ospreys too that's what they want because they've been struggling a bit in scrum time this season you know I think if you want to know how good Alan Wynne Jones is just watch the Ospreys the last three weeks when he hasn't been playing how influential he is safely negotiated by Sam Davis 
no doubt about that one. The Ospreys are on the board. 7-3, they trail. Think you mentioned the pack, Charlie. You know, traditionally, over the last 11 games that the Ospreys have beaten the Blues, it's always been the Ospreys' pack that has bullied the Blues' pack. You go back to the game at the start of the season where Alan Wynne Jones and Bradley Davis just bossed the game. But so far, so good for the Blues. They match, they match them physically. Lloyd Williams picks up. Oh, great break by Lloyd Williams. Macaulay Cook on hand. Cuthbert waiting for that inside feed. Hayata arrives to Felice. Just a couple of metres short of the Osprey try line. Williams, good pass to Anscombe. Nick Williams. Quick ball is what they're looking for here. It's what they have. Gareth Anscombe. Green Williams screaming on the wide outside and the defence is a bit narrow. Pass doesn't find anybody though. Matthew Morgan. Lloyd Williams just keeps it in there to settle down and they have to start all over again. But there are half chances all over the place here. Wait. Navidi, as they're calling for more defenders in that direction of the Ospreys, they're outnumbered. Cuthbert, oof, two men outside him. Seven, seven. Again, the chance was there, it may yet go for Lilo, driven back in the tackle. That's great defending, Lloyd Williams, plummets over though. That's a superb take by Lloyd Williams. Not the way they planned it, but a great finish from the scrum half. Great patience from the Blues, they had a chance on the right-hand side through Lloyd Williams and Cook. Kept hold of the ball, recycled the ball, and as Jamie mentioned earlier, Osprey just can't get anywhere near the Blues ball at the minute when they take it into contact. They win in the contact battle. That's a fantastic so it's that first start. player at the Rupp uh, Nuggets is just so quick at the ball players um, behind running. He's going to the deck and just clearing that ball straight away. The speed of ball is very, very hard to defend, and they're always on the back foot. And that's the game ultimately. Yeah, isn't it? great finish from Lloyd Williams as well. The roll came from the kickoff. Dan Baker carries up. I think it's a hit by Gethin Jenkins. This lodged the ball. Very clinical from the Blues. I'm sure the Blues fans are watching last week in Belfast and the first 20 minutes here and thinking, where's this been all season? Because the performances over the last couple of games have been, you know, they should easily be in the top six when you look at the calibre of the players of the Blues. Right, will they get this one right? Touch it is. I just give it now? Here we go. Yeah, that one's gone over. No doubt about that one. Straight down the middle from Gareth Anscombe. And what a start it's been from the Blues. Two tries in the opening quarter. Dan Baker will be disappointed with that. Yeah, he's just trying to change hands, I think, as he's going into contact, isn't he, as the hit is made. And here we go. I thought they were in, actually, Lloyd Williams, great outside break. But they do well, they don't panic the Blues. You know, it broke down, just taking it into contact, recycle. And at the moment, you'll have to say they're in total control of this game. Maybe squad bring some half chances out wide, but no they're hands. finishing them in different ways. Language. Baldwin is the Ospreys rocking and reeling in the opening quarter. Again, the tackle area Macaulay Cook that time. Straight over the ball. Eight. Eight. Steve Tandy will be absolutely fooling. Don't use language like that, uh, Osprey. They're not getting to the tackle here quick enough. They're not cleaning up. Okay, enough just enough let me and... ref the game, please. So no, there might be a lightweight that. Blues pack, but they're very good around the park and very good again over the ball. Yeah, here. Shot called. Just spoken to him. He's not going to start shouting at me like that. He's not a happy man, is he? Quite easily second best in the contact area mm. at the moment. You see, they get the man to the ground early, which is key. Howie Hart has gone low, allows Macaulay Cook to get over the ball and win the ball. And this is... It's the difference in the game yeah, at the mate. minute, you know, really is that contact area. 
sometimes an underrated player, Macaulay Cook. He's one of those club players who's there all season for you. He was in the academy, uh, coming through the academy when I was at the Blues, you know, and he, he really is. He's the kind of player you want in your squad, in your team. You give it everything, every day of the week, every match he plays in. Probably caught between positions, is he a six, is he a four, is he a five, but invaluable member of the Blue squad. I thought this had been on the edge of Anscombe's limit. And indeed, just found one thing. Yeah, apparently I'm told by kickers that's what happens when you're trying to put too much into it, James, is it? They, 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 they pull it a little bit, so just out of his distance. But worth a shot, I think it's the right decision to go. We all mentioned kicks, so we might. Especially, <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> Charlo, you, Jamie just nudged like me there and said, "Yeah, that was your end as well, wasn't it?" And, uh, <laughs> I was obviously trying to put too much into mine, so I told mine as well. <laughs> Spoke my mind, guy. <laughs> oh, Morgan on the outside. They're certainly trying things. The Blues looking for flow. That Danny Wilson, true to his word, that's the game that suits them. They just look so confident, don't they, the Blues? The count of the blues. Hold on, hold on. What's the call going? Just checking okay. with Gwyn Morris right, what the offence was. Penalty here. Is Bradley Edwin. Davis holding back off the ball. Pull back on Halaholo by Bradley back. Davis. Good Morris to touch us on the far side, yes. pull that one in. And that's who Matthew and Morgan is looking for. Just wait. Back 10 9 if you're not in. Two metres. It's one of those Bradley Davis knows nine. he has got the pace nine. to stay with him, so just gives him a little pull. Well, it's from a similar line out that Christian Dacey right got the opening score. One stop nine. Scott Baldwin, very player, aware player. of the threat. Sharon player, eight. Hello, hello. Say last feet, White. Kevin Jenkins, half a dozen metres out. They see. Osprey's not committing to the breakdown this time, fanning out the defence as no. Navidi gets closer. Felice takes it ahead of Ellis Jenkins, looking to plant it over the tie line. Wasn't quite close enough. And Scum steps and goes and reaches it, does he? No, Andrew Brace says held up, and indeed it was good work by Reese Webb. The Ospreys really can't afford to concede another seven pointer here. It's a very long way back. Um, but the speed of ball the Blues are getting, I mean, the Ospreys really aren't competing at all. It's just all so easy for the Blues, you know, they're winning the contact, as in. You know, the carriers are winning the extra yard, they're winning. There's no pressure on the ball from the Ospreys. It's, uh, you know, so easy for the Blues, so easy for Lloyd Williams at the minute. It's well held up by Reese Webb. But the minute, it's a bit of a it's balance, so uh, It's a bit of a balance nugget, I think. You know, we talk about players on feet in defence. You can kind of see that this, this is a um, tactic for the Ospreys. They're trying to keep their numbers on feet, but what you do when you don't compete then at the breakdown is you give speed of ball to the opposition. And, the Blues are loving life at the minute. Absolutely, you've seen the speed of ball then allows you runners like your Felice, your Geth and Jenkins to, you know, they're coming on at a okay, pace, nice. then off. you're winning that contact uh, easily, so it's a knock-on effect, so... Okay, you've got the players on, on there, like to Nicky Smith, Tipbrick obviously on. likes to get over the ball. Climb back on. It's near you, they really are going to have to sort out the Ospreys if they want to stay in this game. Yeah, it's one-way traffic in the opening 25, more than 60% possession of the Blues to the territory. It's all being played in the Ospreys half, and most of it in the Ospreys 22. OK, let's go. Come on. 40 next month. To the left, boys. Give him another three-year contract, he can still do a job. Legend of a man, legend of a player. It's a critical point in the game now. As I said, long way back for the Ospreys if they can see seven points here. Set, stable. One, 
They won. Quick ball from the scrum to Cuthbert, who comes charging at Sam Move. Davis. Webb is there, but so is Lloyd Williams, and so is Nick Williams. It's try number three, and even with less than 27 minutes gone, you're asking yourself, is there a way back to the Ospreys? Total, total domination from the Blues in this first 26 minutes. No, no rocket science between the... When it came to that try, Alex Cuthbert straight to Sam Davis, Nick Williams straight to Justin Tibrick, and five metres out, you ain't going to stop him from there. All came from a solid scrum, and the Ospreys have got some serious questions to answer. There he is, good, great carry by Cuthbert. The tracks three, four defenders, quick ball again. And like you say, you're not going to stop Nick Williams from there. Impossible job from Tipperick. Well, it's nothing fancy, but it is very, very effective. Well, I think they're doing everything. You know, they are playing some really fancy stuff, the Blues as well, but they're going direct as well. The scrum's going well, the line-out's going well. Life is easier on the front foot, man. Absolutely. I think... Well, 21 points to three to the Blues. I think Phil Steele is with a delighted Danny Wilson. Yeah, he was punching the air at that last try there. Charlo, Danny, how pleasing has this first half hour been? Yeah, you know, I think we've um, showed what we can do in attack, kept real good pressure on them and turned them over a few times defensively as well, which is a pleasing start. Do you change anything at all now or do you just keep playing the same way? No, we'll keep playing the same way. Uh, this is a little bit of our sort of blueprint of our an identity that we want to play, but it's important we get our defensive and exit no. structure right as well to match our attack. And how vital was it that you did score after that pressure there? No, no, you could see the relief on your face when the try over. went over. Yeah, I think we had two opportunities before that that we needed to finish, we didn't, so to take it on that third off the scrum is great. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, could be a yellow card, this one. Yeah, Dan Evans hadn't got back to ground. Alex Cuthbert doesn't look too great there. He may look a bit worse now because he could have a yellow as well. It's a timing issue. He comes in his back. It is, I think it is a yellow. It's Alice Cutler's responsibility to make sure that doesn't that is, happen. That is, has to be yellow. Yeah. I think Alice has chased very well there and he's not expected Dan to jump very last yeah. minute. And unfortunately, you know, the fullback jumps there, you cannot touch him in the air. Yeah, Dan Evans. Eyes locked on the ball, and all of a sudden, the world disappears underneath him, and that has to be yellow. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm seeing there, Neil. Yeah, he's never making a genuine attempt to go for the ball, never in a realistic position. He wasn't the contest. He just takes him out in the air, so I'm thinking penalty yellow card, unless you uh, give me another reason there. Neil Hennessy, the agree GMO. With you there. Okay, yeah, 100%. Agree yeah, with Andrew blues. Brace's version, which agrees with our interpretation. 14. Particularly dangerous, but it was clumsy. And look, look, Captain, I'll tell you what we're seeing there. Showing he's no duty of care for the man in the air. Get the ball, and he just take him, takes him out straight in the air. So it's a yellow card. I have no other option. Yeah, Alex will be really disappointed with that. He's been fantastic in the opening 25 minutes, um, and you can yeah. see the endeavour he's put into that chase one. just in the last yeah. second. He's made the wrong decision. Yeah, it's just one of those, like you say, Jim, I mean, because he hasn't actually launched himself in the air, Dan Evans. I think Cuthbert's thinking he's going to take it still, still take man and ball. But just a little hop by Dan Evans, and it's uh, unquestionably a yellow card. Okay, just uh, just step to me, please. We have seen Alex okay. Cuthbert returning to form over the last few weeks. That's been really good wait, to see. Wait, step to my AR, please. Yeah, got his confidence back, hasn't Can he? Back to the Blues. Good to see. Let's go. That's good now, too. Yeah, those are the men leading the various tours this summer. And they'll be looking at who... They're going to be taking from the two games on view this afternoon. Ashley Beck has a little opportunity this afternoon. The Ospreys haven't had an attacking platform so far. Sam Davis. Finds every route blocked. Very, very, really. We see the Ospreys looking this dishevelled, disorganised. 
Blues are controlling the ball in attack and defence. It's all very Off narrow, isn't it, from the Blues? Uh, from the Osprey, sorry. Dan Evans, now they get a bit of width. Dan Skim is over the cover. That's what they should be doing, because that's where the man is missing. Nick Williams oh, again oh, with a steel guess over the ball. Breakdown is killing no, the Ospreys. Free. Nick Williams again. Morgan, no, I just looked up at the crucial moment to see where the defence was, what the possibilities were, and spilt it. Yeah, he passed that before he caught it. Uh, from Morgan, that was another opportunity on the counter-attack again from the Blues, they are so dangerous. Here he goes, Nick Williams against Stan Evans in the contact area, only one winner. Okay, let's Great steal, he's having a big game, ball in hand on the defence. So please, boys, are we ready? Really interesting period for the Ospreys here, you know, you normally... You know, when they're in a bit of a rut, you look at guys like Dan Bigger, Alan Wynne Jones to yeah, well grab the game by the scruff of the neck, but they're not out there today. So it's uh, last two really good. Up to the likes of Sam Davis, Tip Brick, yeah, it's up to those guys, you know, to really step up and be the leaders. He looks as confused as anybody. Yeah. Steve Tandy, a shake of the head, wondering what on earth Set. is going on. It's been an amazing three or four weeks, hasn't it, for the Ospreys? Looked so strong four or five weeks ago. Even Giles, Steve Tandy, how was? Expected from the Ospreys, Giles was there, but again, they can't complete it. Yeah, well, we've moved. They've got Wallace Cuthbert's wing, obviously, with the yellow card. You know, and it's a fine balance, isn't it? It's a really well worked move. Fine balance from holding on to the ball. Or throwing that miracle pass. And that time, probably David Howell's just got to keep hold of that, recycle the ball, go through the phases. You know, even if Keelan Giles takes that ball, he's into touch. Well, you've got the two smallest men on the field there, Keelan Giles and Matthew Morgan. So that was a pretty fair contest yeah. anyway. Started the last six Good. now for the Ospreys after a bit yeah. of an injury. Let's go, boys. Oh, that's think... a nasty cut for yeah. Nicky Smith. Come on. He'll be fine for the Vaz on that. He'll Not be fine. Uh, lads, last one, you're getting ahead of me. Keep the space, please, and balance. He doesn't need to dwell on this yellow card. No, it's, 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 it's one of those things, just mistimed it, let it go, and come back in the positive frame of mind he's shown over the last few weeks. Absolutely. Coach! Big period of the game, this you're going to have to think, you no, know, they've come to 40 men, the Blues, they can hang on going into half time with this lead in a very, very good position to go on to win this game. And the Ospreys on the flip side, they'll want to score. Yeah, stay there now. Eight. Lloyd Williams quite happy to put it into the stand. I'm going to start holding players, OK? Yeah, he's had a good first 30 okay. minutes, Lloyd Williams, coming under pressure from young Thomas Williams, who could control the game. On your front man, boys, on your front well, man. who's uh, fighting to get back in that Welsh shirt. Seen Gareth Davis. Take over as number two to Reese Webb. Beck on the angle. Good strength, Ashley Beck. Baldwin. Well, if the Ospreys can score from here, they feel they're back in the game. Absolutely. Again, see Joris Navidi going really low, getting them out the ground early. Defeat Nicky, Stay. so good at that Nicky Smith, just a little sidestep to get him on the front foot. Just looking to inject a bit of pace into the game, Webb around the fringes. No, no, no! Again, the Blues battling hard at the breakdown and it slows things down for the Ospreys, they get more men in defensive positions. And the ball's been called. What's That's up? Excellent defensive work by the Blues, they've won themselves, they put it in the scrum. Brilliant work from Ray Lilo. Scott Baldwin actually was point, holding his hand out to Reese Webb, they didn't want the ball, but Ray Lilo, man and ball, holds Scott Baldwin up and his mates come in to win a vital scrum for the Blues. 
see Scott Williams, he didn't really want this ball, and he spot blitzed him, really low, held him up. I think Ellis Jenkins is in there. Locked himself on, but Matthew, oh, it's Reem Williams, the wingers getting involved. Sums up the first 35 minutes, really. The Blues have been total control with the ball and without. Some more running repairs. It's time to the opposite prop. As in. Like experienced yeah. ball um, water carrier for you, water boy for you, yeah. isn't it? Too right. He'd much rather have his boots on and his jersey on, let me tell you, he'd be as frustrated yeah, as anybody nice. watching his first 35 minutes. Mind you, he's probably just as scary in the bib on as he is with the shirt. <laughs> Come on, Neil, please. Keep the space aside now, okay? Don't lean in. I said don't lean in, that's, oh, that's right. everything. Thank you. Coach! Bind! Sit! Stay up! Stay there! Scrum has been Use it eight. solid, giving Nick Williams the platform. That. Driving up towards that 22. That's invaluable, a couple of metres, no doubt. The Blues to clear their lines. Turnover's good. Oh, steal. Chance again for the Ospreys to attack. James King, Ellis Jenkins goes flying into his midriff. And the to Beck. Good hands to David Howells. Trying their best to utilise the space vacated by Alex Cuthbert. Tipperick. Webb has a snipe. Nick Williams is ready for him. There's a penalty coming. Ospreys want more than three at the moment. But three. he had to settle for just that. Taking the space beyond the ball. Yeah. It's on the wrong side. Right. Interesting call you where they go for the corner or, or go for the three. I think if you're the Blues, you'd be very happy if you can just concede three points. No, they're going for the corner and it's a big call from Webb. Well, no problem you attacking the ball. Provided well, the penalty would still make it a three-score game, yeah. so I suppose they've got to know their ventures down to this territory have been few and far between. Man two. But they need to score from here now. Absolutely. Tipperick takes. They go to ground. So wait there. Driving line out halted at source. Use it. It's going to be difficult from here because most of the forwards are all tied in on the floor. From the Ospreys, there's plenty there from the Blues. Scott Baldwin lost it. And he's taking a bang here, Scott Baldwin as well. Alaholo. At the moment, the Ospreys' oh, carriers can't make any dents in the Blues' defensive line. Oyata struggling after that last collision, but the Blues' defence exemplary, and the Ospreys have no answers at the moment. No, nothing at all. Great defence from the Blues in the driving line out five metres out, and then, as you say, Charlo, here we go. What's the hit here? Flying in. Ooh. Ooh. Shoulder on Scott Baldwin's head there. That was interesting Don't from Jared Hayes. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? On the line, Ospreys in the Obviously, going for the double hit on Baldwin. Not sure how much arm was involved in the tackle. Shoulder certainly was. Matavesi, great pass to Dan Baker. Looking for any kind of support, looking to hang on to it. Reen Williams with a brave tackle on the number no, eight. Not. Beck. Wait, wait. It's needed by guys on the outside then. Beck to follow Baker up. It's obviously a pre plan move. The outside guys have got to come up in support of Baker there. King to Sam Davis. 
say, say. It's almost last chance saloon in the first half Clearly for the class. Ospreys. Nicky Smith. Take a step, Blue. Blue is very confident in defence as well. Baker. Don't hold him in. David Howells trying to make sure his Rock pace forward. was enough to go through the gap, but it wasn't. Dennis Jenkins illegally. Rock his form. Yeah, he called Andrew Brace there, he called that very early rock form. Ellis Jenkins just needed to be a little bit more patient there because Blues are in control defensively. Well, they didn't concede while Alice Cuthbert was off the field. And Ooh, that was a very, very close call from Sam Davis. He can't take the throw in because Scott Bowling's down at the minute injured just underneath this year with his shoulder. Happy. Tom off. Uh, Andrew Brace only Hook just realised. Scott Baldwin. Listen to your captain voice. Meter line. Rock is formed. Yeah. I'm fine with the first man, but then you've come in then second. The rock is formed. No, it's fine. It's fine. On the touch side. It's fine. You're all the way over there. Yeah, look at the outside guys. You know, they haven't read it. Ashley Beck's on his heels and no hey, support hey, at hey. all for Dan Baker. Okay, come here. It's a great best. It's obviously a pre call move. To me. If you want to come back on the pitch, I suggest you stick to your own job now, okay? Just going at Dan Scum Baker. But then nobody around him. Look how many blue shirts there are, no white shirts. Reese Webb's hey, eventually getting off. there. He shouldn't be the man cleaning out that ruck, you know. He should be. Come on. This is a crucial line off the Ospreys. Wait, wait. Desperately need Over a score 15, right, right, right. from here at the end of the first half. But the Blues defence has been confident and well organised. No, the Blues pack have out muscled the backwards. Ospreys pack in this first half. It's been a great Six. performance. Six is fine. Uh, Josh Navidi came through legally. Scott Baldwin bemused. And the Ospreys are in danger of losing it. And they have lost it. And the Ospreys, well, that sums it up for them. They have looked lost in the first half. The Blues have looked totally in control. Confident and taking their chances, three of them in the first half. Christian Dacey and the two Williamses, Lloyd and Nick, all converted, well, kind of, by Gareth Anscom. And the Ospreys have a long, long way back in this one, if they can at all. At half time, it's the Cardiff Blues 21, the Ospreys 3. Who would have believed it? Phil. Ellis Jenkins, we know about the attacking intent for the Blues, but how important was the fact you didn't concede there? Yeah, that was huge. Uh, Hengler Ford's got me, got me out of a bit of trouble there. I went chasing a lost cause, give away a penalty, so I'm uh, been pretty grateful they, uh, they got me off the hook. Confident you can keep it going? Yeah, we need to. We, we start the last couple of games really well, so we just need to keep it going to the second half. Thanks for your time. Have a good orange. Cheers, Phil. So that is the half-time score, 21-3 to the Cardiff Blues. And you look at those stats, actually quite even. Tackles made, identical. Tackles missed, identical. Critical one there, though. The Blues have won seven turnovers, six turnovers, rather, to the Ospreys. One, we saw Ellis Jenkins there, the arch-predator at the breakdown. So in the only uh, stat that really matters is the scoreboard. The Blues massively in front. And... Uh, Jamie Roberts, the former Blue and Cardiff boy, is beaming from ear to ear because this is the complete performance from the Cardiff Blues. You know, one stat they didn't show there was speed of ball and, and game line. I think the Blues have played a pretty direct game. It'd be fantastic um, in their support play in the ruck. That first play is there very quickly. I'm not sure if the Ospreys are playing a game where they're trying to fan and not competing too hard at the ruck, Sean. Um, but that is just allowing the speed of ball for the Blues to get there, You know, to be able to play out the back, to get the threats like Matthew Morgan, Hallahol or Ray Lilo on the ball in space. And as you boys mentioned in commentary, once you've got that momentum, the next breakdown is easier for, to win the collision and the next one, the next one, it is kind of like a domino effect. Well, as Jimmy says, they, they're on the front foot then and these, these creative players, the footwork that these guys have, you know, it's just really difficult to defend when you're backpedalling or sidetracking and 
the Blues are, are, are without doubt worthy uh, leaders at the moment. They are at the game. They are much more urgent and decisive. And the Ospreys look really, really lacking in confidence. Body language is poor and, you know, the ability to score is not there. Perhaps a reflection of the fact they've lost the last three. Their confidence is fragile at the minute and uh, it took a knock in the first five minutes, Sean, because Christian Dacey over with that early try. Now, was that good opportunism from the hooker or sloppy defence from the Ospreys? It was a bit of both, to be honest, Ross, and uh, they got good early field position. We're worthy of that and it was a good mall set up. Look at Nick Williams as a plus one. Dacey comes onto the ball. Now, Nicky Smith and Scott Baldwin are the ones that protect the short side here. Because it splits and it's reasonably well defended, Nicky Smith gets dragged to the open side. Scott Baldwin wanders in. He loses concentration and it's a good decision from Dacey anticipates well because they're going to ground just watch here now you look at Nicky Smith coming around over onto the open side Baldwin gets sucked in and it's really timely from Dacey shows good anticipation a good feel for them all good score and that was almost the shape of things to come Jamie the the, the confidence boost that gave the Blues seemed to permeate through, throughout the entire team well they're running with purpose they're running with intent they're breaking the first tackle um, seen Alex Cuthbert has carried fantastically well certainly off the kickoffs. So you can see the endeavour to play and as you know, Sean has said, when you're playing on the front foot, you can play with width. Ospreys cannot get off the line in defence. And we talked about the fragility of the Ospreys' com confidence right now. They're playing like a team who look to have the weight of the world on their shoulders, looking sloppy at times, losing balls on the floor, and in the case of that Matavesi interception, just not finishing off a golden opportunity. No, I, I mean, getting isolated, as we saw with Dan Bigger then. You know, look at Matavesi here, lacks the pace. But no communication, you know, it's really poor stuff. You're not used to seeing this stuff from the Ospreys. Falling over, bad passes. And you know, as you see Ellis Jenkins on the ball, this is running out of the kickoff. You just need to consolidate here, build some field position, and Baker loses it. Now, this ultimately results in a, a series of phases for the Blues. And again, this typifies where the Ospreys are at at the moment. They defend this phase, but look at Nicky Smith and Dan Baker coming in here now, right? They start walking on this phase. You're on your own line. Get urgent, get in, stop them going over the line. That's just too easy, Ross. You know, Cuthbert carries hard. He's looked really up for this one, trying to isolate Sam Davis. You know, they're having a crack at the line. But again, the slowness, the walking in, the lack of urgency costs you at this level. It's the speed of ball as well. There's, no, there's hardly any white jerseys competing on the ball, um, which amazes me. It yeah. amazes me where someone hasn't gone after 10, 15 minutes Hang on, guys, the speed of ball's too quick. We need more numbers of the contact area. Let's, you know, forget about them spreading the ball out wide. Let's deal with A first, and, and that's the contact area. And perhaps that is the absence of your leaders, your Alan Wins, your Dan Biggers. There's no one out there making that big call. And, and we saw Steve Tandy there giving his troops a, a real rollicking in the dressing room. Yeah, it's been a trademark over the years to have a plus one over the ball. Jamie would know that. And they do seem to be now more containing, as I said at the top of the show. But they're missing Alan Wynn as a leader and Dan Bigger as a driving force. In the flip side of all this, Jamie, we've talked about the Ospreys looking fragile in confidence. The Blues have looked sensational at times in their back play, and we touched on this before kickoff that the midfield just controlling things and the opportunities are there for the Blues all afternoon. Yeah, it's the, it's the confidence to play. Um, and when you're on the front foot, we have a look here. Um, when you've got guys like Matthew Morgan, Halaholo, Lilo holding the width, holding depth at the back of the forwards, when you're on the front foot, you can play to those guys. When you're not on the front foot, you can't because you put yourself under pressure. Look at this footwork beat Sam Davis, you know, in, in about a metre of space. Um, and again, front football, you're, you can play out the back, um, get guys like Matthew Morgan, footwork against low numbers, um, and they're very dangerous. You know, this is a great pass by Ellis Jenkins around the corner, sees the space, and Reem Williams has, has impressed me. I mm. think he's, you know, he, he runs hard, he's, his support lines are fantastic, and he's, he's working very hard off the ball, and they're certainly one to watch. What, what it's doing for the Ospreys defence is it's, it's disorganising them, Ross. You're seeing Brian Majati out in the midfield having to, to face Matthew, Matthew Morgan. Brad Davis, look, pulling back Halaholo, because they know they're a threat off the ball. They're very worried of these guys in the midfield. Absolutely. Well, uh, it's a long uphill struggle for the Ospreys. If they are to get themselves back into this game, the second half is coming up very soon. David Parry Jones, our condolences to his family and all those who knew and loved him. We can go back now to uh, pitch side. Phil Steele is with Gareth Davis. Yeah, thanks very much, Ross. Uh, Gareth, I don't want you to put your chairman's uh, hat on now. Put the uh, rugby man's hat on. You won your first cap on a tour of Australia in 78, 39 years ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who have you had a look at today who could make the tour? 
Oh, I think a lot of the young guys today have put their hands up. You know, Keelan Giles on the wing has looked quite good defensively. He hasn't had too much sort of possession because the Blues really dominated that first half. And I think some of the established names, more established names, if you like, uh, Lloyd Williams, Gareth Anscombe, Alex Cuthbert, they, they've all sort of, uh, I think, made a point today and have made a point over the last couple of weeks as well. So so I think it'd be, it'd be very interesting, I think, who, uh, who uh, the Welsh team, Welsh selectors take with them uh, on, on the summer draw, because I think it's an opportunity now two years and a bit ahead of the World Cup. Great opportunity for some of these younger people coming through, say the less established uh, players, to uh, put their stamp on uh, on things. And what did you make of the first half as, as a game for the neutral? Yeah, look, the Blues have been on a good run now in their last three games uh, against Ulster, Leinster and, and Gloucester. Although they didn't win those games, they played very well. The Ospreys, again, have been on a little bit of a slump uh, in relation to their sort of high standards. So, yeah, it looks on the, looks to the Blues, but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't totally underestimate the Osprey second half. OK, thanks for your time. Enjoy the second half. Thank Cheers, you. Gareth. Back to you, Ross. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Jamie, I've got to ask you how frustrating this, this must be for Blues fans, and you mentioned it in commentary. Where's this been all season? Is that a fair comment, or is this just the fact they're on an upward trajectory and this perhaps marks a turning point? No, I know Nugget mentioned it in commentary. It wasn't me, Ross, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, look, it's great to see them playing with this endeavour. And... I think it's that balance. Um, when they made signings like Nick Williams, Lilo, Halaholo, guys who you know have got bags of talent, um, you have to get them in space and you have to get them doing what they do best. Um, and that's within a certain game plan. And that's going to take time to develop. It can't just happen overnight. And Danny, I know Danny works very hard at trying to do that and bringing the best out of everyone. Um, but they've got a lot of quality. Um, you see a little bit of a scuffle there uh, with, uh, with Alan Wynn. But... Uh, <laughs> He's getting quite passionate, but um, yeah, look, it's it's about the Blues boys um, trying to bring the best out of each individual, and it, towards the tail end of the season, it looks like they've been doing that. Clash of the Titans there, Nick Williams against Alan Wynn Jones, who's winning that? Uh, Nick Williams. <laughs> now, that goes to show exactly what I said just now, Ross, they are missing Alan Wynn, and even though he's a water carrier today, he's trying to have an influence, but it also shows the mindset of this Cardiff Blues team. They're up for this one. They have a point to prove, they've had a poor season as far as the table goes. They're out to prove a point publicly today here in Cardiff. We've got to point out that this same game last year, the Blues did go ahead before the Ospreys had their resurgence and came back and won that game. And Gareth Davis said there, underestimate the Ospreys at your peril. Yeah, you do, but they're in a different place at the moment to where they were maybe five, six, seven weeks ago. I don't see enough on the bench, I don't see enough in their body language, language at the moment, Ross, to see them coming back from that. I think this second half depends on the ruck area. Uh, first and foremost, the Ospreys would have looked at that half-time. It's about running hard, getting speed of ball and playing on the front foot. It's as simple as that. Here we go then, second half about to get underway. We can rejoin Martin Williams and Gareth Charles. Thanks very much, Ross. All to do for the Ospreys in the second half. What impact could this have on their whole season? They were looking at a home semi-final at one stage. Now they could be looking to slip out of the top four altogether. And that would be disastrous from the position they've been in. It's their contest. Great take by Green Williams. Right there. Nice to see a bit of fire as well at half time between Nick Williams and Alan Wynn. I enjoyed that. It was, and it's something that the Ospreys, I think, over the last few years have done to the Blues. They've bullied the Blues. And Free. that first half has ended Free. the goal by the Blues are not taking a back step, back step backwards tonight. They yeah. step backwards even. Josh Navidi was in there first, yeah. and then Nick Williams on his side. But well, look, yeah. it's, good, it's good to see, isn't it? There's something on it's a derby. Here he is, he's over the ball again, Nick Williams. Brilliant. Brilliant, he's been superb in the first half. Right off the face well, he may have done his talking to Alan Wynn after the end of the first half, but he's done his talking on the field in the tackle area, certainly, this afternoon. Hold it's the timing as well, he comes from the outside, it's a great tackle from Ellis Jenkins again, brings the man down early and it allows Nick Williams get in that pass, the third one. Well, I said at the very beginning that uh, no Sam Warburton and Nick Williams is a very different player. He's very Sam Warburton in the tackle area this afternoon. He's up for this today, isn't he? And uh, big occasion, you need your big players. Yeah, they're just winning all the 50-50s, aren't they? All the... It's, the... it's a great tick. Yeah, the great. two Levens showing aerial skills. Cook to Dacey. Williams again straight at the heart of that Osprey defence and quick ball. Cuthbert brilliantly done by Cuthbert. Oh, one pass to the release. Roy Williams Step again away. could still be on. Felice drives on toward that Osprey try line. Daisy with a pick and go. Just 
short of the line. He's over, but the ball hasn't been put down. No, it's great work from Tipperick in the end, but again, no fancy plays from the Blues. It's just our man, Nick Williams. His physicality, Cuthbert's physicality, straight down the middle, and the Ospreys just can't handle it. It's a good line out, Paul. Quick. And they really hit the, that defence hard. Here we go, it's Nick Williams. And it's a great line from Alex Cuthbert, straight off Lloyd Williams. And then it's a Lloyd Williams to Felice. I think Tipperick just manages to get his arms over and steal the ball. OK, let's go, seconds. The Blues start of the second half like they played the first. Lloyd Williams cleans up, but it slowed things down, and whatever move they had planned, they've had to abandon and just set up from Lilo. And here come the forwards again, led by Josh Navidi. Away now! Lloyd Williams orchestrating players around him. Nick Williams with another big carry. Yeah. Mujati with a tackle. Anscombe. Cuthbert again round the back. Alex Cuthbert. So, oh, wait, so close. Say, say one, one. Felice. He's got there. And it's foul Felice who's got the bonus point for the Blues. And that is as popular a try as you can have for the Cardiff Blues. Brilliant from the... Is he 14 x Street Charles? <laughs> Brilliant work from Foul Felice, but again, it's just the power, the ball carrying from the Blues, the Ospreys just can't handle it, and patience as well. He did it in the first half when Lloyd Williams went over this time. A nice, good skill from Lloyd Williams. And Felice two metres out against Sam Davis and Bradley Davis, he's got the strength, the power, and just reaches over. An outstanding first 44 minutes from the Blues. Enjoyed this pass from Lloyd Williams. Just showboating, that is, no need to do it, but it comes off. <laughs> sort of thing you do now. Yeah, but... he has just had an armchair ride, the armchair ride Lloyd Williams, or the Blues pack is just totally dominant. The speed of ball that they produce has been outstanding. really is a test of character now from the Ospreys. I think if you're the Ospreys, if you're not going to contest for the ball in the contact area, you need to win the collisions, but they, at the moment they do neither. They're losing the collisions when they're losing ball carrying, and they're not slowing down any ball either, so... Great work from Felicia, and like you say, that's so popular, he's one of the most popular players within the squad. It is left third with the Blues since joining from back, how can he say? It's desperate times now for the Ospreys, Luke Price, 21 year old, has come on to replace Josh Matavesi as they look for something different. The fact that it's Kieran Fonatier has come on, is it? Yeah. Sam Davis looking for the flat ball of Baker, hasn't worked. Great pick up, Casey. Uh, Casey, lovely work through by Halaholo, and Scum on the chase, and he wins it as well. It's all going the Blues' way, and that must be it. A fifth try for the Blues, and the celebrations are starting early. I think shock Charlie, I don't know what to say. Nobody saw this coming, did they? Again, it all came from in midfield between Sam Davis, I think it was Baker, they weren't sure who was carrying, who was supposed to get the ball, they spilled great pick-up and spin from Dacey. Watch his pick-up and spin from Dacey, great skills, gives it to Hollow Hollow. We say on turnover ball you shouldn't kick, but it's a great kick this time, and Anscombe's got the pace from Sam Davis. Bounces up cruelly. 
What a start from the Blues the first seven minutes of the second half. And the Ospreys, they just look all at sea. Well, it's all going swimmingly for the Blues, and it's all going horribly, horribly wrong for the Ospreys. Anscombe converts his own try, and they can't put a foot wrong in the moment. For the winger, but Gareth Anscombe on hand, quite literally, to grab the fifth. Oozing, oozing, oozing confidence in the minute. Ellis Jenkins now taking fantastic, fantastic take from the kickoff. That's a long, long 30 minutes for the Ospreys. Alex Cuthbert bided his time on that occasion. Through goes Reese Webb. They need something, and they need something quick. Ashley Beck to Keenan Fonatia. Ashley to Keenan Giles. Bradley Davis. Welcome back, Sisk. Even if enjoyed that one, get the junk. It is eyes lit up there when he saw Bradley Davis <laughs> coming on the short ball. <laughs> The ribs, Brad, will be the talk afterwards over a beer. Tipperick, how else? What's been really impressive from the Blues, even when they've been best, is they've reorganized really well and got itself back in defensive shape and won collisions like that again. That flat ball isn't working for the Ospreys that time. Bradley Davis managed to hang on to it. Fonatia. Yeah. In at the breakdown. Only one Two. team in it. First on the ball. Release on the ground. We're playing on, boys. We're playing on. Let's go. There, back here, back here. And I feel he say it took a bit of a knock as he <coughs> threw his okay, body on off. the line. Too many people on. There's two players down. Just on the other side of the field, and while he and Christian Daisy have a bit of treatment, what do the Ospreys make down. of it? Let's, Let's find out by joining Phil. Uh, Griff Reese, difficult times for you. Uh, how okay. on what can you salvage from it okay, now? Water off. Yeah, it's the balance between playing uh, catch-up rugby but trying to be in control of what you're doing and uh, clearly we haven't been in control from uh, minute one. What has been the, the big difference and most disappointing thing from your perspective? Uh, we've just forced things. Um, the Blues defensive line has kept uh, good shape. We haven't been able to penetrate it. And then we brought them onto the ruck area pretty strongly. Well, thanks for your time as always. Thanks, sir. Just step off me, please. On, a bit more. on your one, please. How many? Blues work their way back down to the Ospreys 22. Short holding. There'll be some happy men there. You cannot walk in. You stay on the AR. Gareth Edwards. Step off White. Thomas. White. Good enough. Richard Holland. Navidi. So he's getting, getting over the game line. And look at that ball, it's on a plate for Lloyd Williams. That's fine. Going forward every carry. Absolutely. You know, they're making two or three metres with ease. Ball is lifted. Ospreay is getting pushed no, back no, two. to their own try line consistently. Lilo didn't panic. Wait, wait. And as always, support is on hand. 
carefully set. Ellis Jenkins. Tackle, release, a move. Anscombe, Halaholo. They see roaming out in the wide open spaces. Dan Evans. And even then, Blues managed stay, to get stay. defenders back. No! Even when they were looking to attack. Rodri Jones. Yeah. As you mentioned, Martin, look at the speed at which the Blues get back into yeah. defensive shape. They concede maybe 10, 15 metres in the wider channel. The Ospreys are then looking up from just seeing a blue wall. It's been pretty impressive, the space in the defence. Good read by Daisy when he saw Baker going on the angle as well. Loose pass, and Ellis Jenkins, as he has done all afternoon, snaffles up anything loose. Daisy. Huge game as Christian Casey. Release White! As well as getting the opening try. Halaholo. They look a bit tired at the moment of the Blues. A little wonder because they've gone at this <laughs> at a rare old lick. Hey, straight in the side. You. But that mistake from Beck all eight. comes from the defensive organisation of the Blues. You know, like Jamie says, at the moment, the Ospreys, they can't go through the Blues because they're not winning the physical contact and they haven't really got the skill to get outside them. So. Complete domination in defence from the from the Blues. Uh, Anton Tekrishvili will take three, over three. from Taufau Felice. Three, two. Yeah, I think Fau's been since his try. He's been looking over to that bench, thinking, "When am I coming off? I've done my bit." In the last ten minutes, what a shift from the old fella. All square, Munster, Ulster, Ulster in fifth. This after, before the start this afternoon, Munster in second. Hey, the Ospreys need a Munster win yeah, there, don't they? they certainly do. They can forget home draw now. They just don't want to be caught to the last. Sean, number. Number five, interference Wonderful in shift from Fan Felice, you know, to see a guy of that age, you know, it takes three people to stop him every yeah. carry. He's been a huge part of the, most of the tries the Blues have scored tonight. Discipline now, boys. They just haven't been Discipline. able to cope with him, Nick Williams, the physicality of those two. Scott Otten, the replacement Osprey hooker. Good delivery by Tipperick, but he's asking too much of Sam Davis. Good, mate. One after, yeah, Gwyn. Yeah. One alive for the second. Lost control, never regathered. Yeah, when somebody as good as Reese Webb is making passes like that, you know it's not your day. Really Let's go, tall. boys. Give Sam Davis Come no on. chance. Right, so we can't keep stopping here. Okay, take your right. It's a situation the Ospreys won't be used to a situation like this, you know, just playing Let's for go, pride, Water really. Up. No chance of winning this Water game. Up. Off. Time They've on. somehow just got to find some confidence out of this last 25 minutes to take into the yeah, last two games of the season. It's getting Jenkins going up right away, and there's a point you were making half time, Martin, that the presence on. of getting Jenkins has been massive That's for the Blues the really over the last few okay. weeks. The absence That's of Alan Wynn Jones, equally so for the Ospreys. Look, we haven't mentioned getting Jenkins' name too much during the game, but I tell you what, his influence in that change room, being on the pitch, it just lifts everybody else Punch. by 10 15 percent. And it's no coincidence Fight. over the last three or four weeks he's been back fit. Set. And there's been an upsurge in the Blues performance. You know, he's an incredible point. leader, an incredible player. No nine. Hold five. Dan Evans. And Matthew Morgan back up for a second bite at it. James King. Bradley Davis. 
the Ospreys try and build. Oh. But nothing. But nothing. Bruce Webb knew what he was doing yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the ball straight into the Blues player who was obviously lying offside. It's incredible. The Ospreys have won the last 11 against the Blues. They've lost. They won the last okay, what, 28 of the last 30 against all the Welsh regions. Well, you go back to the, the coinciding game of this at the Liberty uh, pre-Christmas, where the Ospreys totally bullied the Blues out of there. Alan Wynne Jones, Bradley Davis, the Ospreys pack totally dominated the game, but it's been complete reverse in this fixture. It's been the Blues pack have just been absolutely outstanding for me. That guy there, the four, Chris Dacey. But the general physicality of the Blues pack totally dominated the Ospreys. See if the Ospreys can uh, use this possession now to score some points. I think they've had quite a few set pieces in the Blues 22 and have come away with absolutely nothing all game. So it'd be nice to see them fire a shot. Numbers? When you come. Come on. Back you go 10. Back you go 10. Five. And even. The attacking line doesn't go right for them. Well, if you're not going to get that right, you are not going to get back into the game. They've had, they had their opportunities in the first half five metres out, but they couldn't convert. That's a great kick from Lloyd Williams. He's had a good game too. Then again, the forwards have been yeah, it's gonna pretty say easy it. for him. In, Ospreys, in. Very much a confidence player, Lloyd. When he's confident, you know, he's a top-class player. It just shows how good he can be with front football today. You know, even 35 points of three, it's great to see the Blues lads still hungry to get off the line in defence. You know, and putting in tackles like that. Good pass by Gethin Jenkins to bring Matthew Morgan in. Green Williams called for it early. Well played, Green Williams to Lloyd Williams on the outside. Cuthbert is tracking inside. Tried one that he did up in the Seen World that before somewhere, have we? I, just saw, I saw a flashback of talking <laughs> on that. He knew and he's smiling, he knows as well. Yeah, again, it's the hit, it's the organisation and defence. Fonatier comes short, Alahola. Great play by Reen Williams, you know, didn't take into contact, timed his pass. Perfection. And Cuthbert is on the inside as well. Six. Gareth Davis under the steps. <laughs> yeah, no deja vu. Back 10 9. Yeah, you can see the Blues, they just got an extra yard and they step. And they, 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 when you're 35 right. points to three up, you don't really get tired. You just want the ball in your hand. You want to keep playing. Yeah, yeah. The Ospreys, on the other hand, they'll be desperate for the final whistle. Yeah, the Blues. Eight. And looking for one of the playoff games for the uh, Champions Cup next year. Seven holes in the mid. It'll be either against the seventh place English team or the seventh place French team. At the moment, Northampton in seventh, but they're on the same number of points and paid one less than the Harlequins. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be good fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fancy blues up at the stoop for a place in Europe next year. Okay, step away. No comments as of yet. <laughs> Obviously, we're uh, we're playing for top six in the Aviva um, at the minute, but it could it could easily end up being that uh, Charlotte. Yeah, Racing seventh in the championnat at the moment, but Breve, Paul Castro also in the mix. It'll be a tough game wherever you go. It's 59 minutes, and the Ospreys have finally won a turnover in the contact area. You know, Ashley Beck has finally gone in and stolen one. But yeah, you mentioned that this isn't a performance of an eighth place team, is it, in the Pro 12? It's uh, really frustrating from, from a, you know, if you're a Blues supporter, top two, top shift from those two today. Oh dear. Oof. That's a nasty one for Dan Baker. Big hand for Daisy and Gethin Jenkins as they depart. Yeah, they've been the foundation of what's been fantastic about the Blues today. Uh, I think Daisy has you know, improved as a player significantly over the past few seasons and really is coming to the fore um, as you know, one of the form hookers, um, not just in Wales but in Britain at the minute. He's, he's fantastic with the ball, um, he's great in defence, he really, really puts in a huge shift and he has that today. Well, busy day of rugby here tomorrow as well. It's uh, finals day as far as the Welsh Cups go and uh, Phil Steele has got someone who will be particularly busy tomorrow.
Yeah, thank you very much, Gareth. It's Pontypridd against RGC in the Cup, Penelfred against Esther Verde in the plate, and Ammon United featuring Shane Williams against Caffilly. This man, Rhys Cleverly, will be a hooker for Caffilly, and he's also a groundsman here at Hook Principality up. Stadium. How are you looking forward to it, Rhys? Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, the boys in the club are really set for it. It's a big occasion for the club after many years in the, in the doubt, but uh, I think we do well tomorrow. And if Shane Williams goes on one of his runs down the wing, you've got the, the obvious anecdote. Get off the pitch, you can say, because you're the groundsman. Yeah, check the shit off the pitch, and... Uh, I'm sure the boys will call him tomorrow well, so I'm uh, looking forward to it. Chance of a lifetime, have a good one. Thank you, Phil. Cheers, thank you. Love you. Haberfield and Paul James, the latest two replacements for the Ospreys combining. But again, they're flying up for the Blues. It, right. They may have looked tired a minute or two ago, but they haven't slowed down, and their effort certainly hasn't diminished. It's great passing lane work from uh, Willis Hallahola Seven. there. Seven. See him blocking off those options out wide for Sam Davis. Space being cut down wherever the Ospreys try and find it. Off, off. Sam Davis back to Giles. Say six. Bad edge rolling wrong side. Hasn't had too much of the ball in space, Kinnan Giles, this, uh, this afternoon, has he? Well, Paul James has had quite a few carries yeah. in the few seconds he's been on. Dan Evans trying to cut yeah. the angle, but Haberfield couldn't release him. This is actually better from the Ospreys. Rodri Jones. Right there. Ah, John. Good footwork. Hit Tipperick in a bit of space. Support comes from James no, King. Well. No. And again, Tipperick feeds, this time to Scott Otten. Haberfield. Sam Davis. Okay, 10. Ten advantage, There's 10. a penalty coming, but the Ospreys desperate to cross that dry line. Dan Evans slips through, and at last, at long, long last, the Ospreys have got a try. Yeah, it's the best passage to play in the whole game. All started from Tyler Adam. Great footwork, just a break. Oh, there's going to be yellow card here. Well, it's taken them to the 60th minute to run with a bit of purpose and get a bit of speed of ball. Uh, you know, and you see what happens off the back of that. Yeah, he's Simbin Anscombe as well. I'm not sure if he said something or... Right. Well, there was a, a warning given during Coming that build-up by the Ospreys. Continued infringement offside. Gareth Anscombe's a bit baffled. Yeah, he's got his hand out for persistent Open infringing. Rolling. Going 10 offside. Definitely no other option again, no again. Yeah, okay. Got it. Wait there. You're happy to play on, lads? You're happy? Just wait, time is off. Referee just waiting. It's. Come on. Now, there's a quick drop goal conversion by Sam Davis. Time precious for the Ospreys. As Ellis Jenkins, who is still getting treatment underneath the posts, but he's okay. Let's take it. Hey, Blue's gone, yeah. And he's coming off, yeah. Sean Bennett coming off. has just come on, and Nick Williams <laughs> trudges off. He's on it. Outstanding game, Nick Williams today, both in attack and defence. Here's Sam Davis. Went for the old school Phil Bennett, healing the ground, and put it, but he decided to go with the drop kick instead. Well, then, 
how much life can that inject into the Ospreys for the final 18 minutes? Well, there he goes, that answer as Matthew Reese gets a present. Yeah. Charlo, isn't it? <laughs> over. Lloyd Williams tries to stop through for Alex Cuthbert. They'll be happy just to pin him back anyway. Quickly taken by Dan Evans. Giles looking for a bit of space. Cross comes Matthew Morgan. Sean Bennett on loan from Northampton, corner Scarlett. Halahola to Matthew Morgan. Rolls out of the tackle. Navidi slips through a couple of tackles. And if Halahola would have held on to that one, he could well have been in for a sixth. As it is, the Ospreys through Rodney Jones have to try and build from deep, deep inside their 22. King gets them going forward. Haberfield to Sam Davis. Fonatia steps inside. Great tackle by Hoyata. That really sums up the effort of the Blues for Jared Hoyata to get across with that tackle on Kieran Fonatia. Crucial. I thought he was away then. Fonatia definitely had the overlap then on the right hand side, the Ospreys. Otten. Done. Okay, no advantage. Back here. Some tired bodies out yeah. there now from both teams. That's a game that's been played at a fair old pace. Stephen Shingler coming on for Matthew Morgan. So Shingler, certainly for the time being, will slot in at 10 with Gareth Hanscom, yellow carded. Time off. Time off. Yeah, we're heading through mate. I'm not going to risk that, okay? Okay? Yeah, Water off, lads. Time off. Yeah. yeah. The, the Ospreys have been hoping for a ball that size, I think, sometimes during this game. A bit of judgment day, fun and entertainment for the Principality crowd. Let's go, nine! Okay, let's go, fellas. Good standards now, you two, you've just come off. Scrums have been excellent, lads. Not going to change now. Crouch! Find! Yeah, interesting defensively for the Blues, Eugene. They've just got a 10, 12, 13, so... It's basically 6v3 six, six plus 1. Okay. They've got to go on me, the Ospreys. You know, they're not going to kick this, they've got to go wide. Well, they've brought Keelan Giles in ready. Listen to me, listen to me. I think it's safe to say there's a bit of space out there. <laughs> you need to get your feet further forward. Obviously, just Cuthbert said, and Ree Williams. Okay, let's go now. Expect a hard drift from Ala Hollow and Lilo just to try and usher the, the Ospreys set, towards the touchline. Right. Let's go. Plenty of room for the Ospreys. No, I think Ree Williams has shown a real understanding of yeah. backfield defence. I obviously look back to Dan Baker's line break in the first half. He was there Crouch. in hand to, to finish that uh, move. Now he's just Find. worked really well. I think him and Alice Cuthbert have shown a real appetite for work. Oh. Stay, stay. Um, and they've covered a lot of metres, that's for sure. They've, uh, they've worked very hard. Now the Ospreys didn't get a chance yeah, to use there. whatever move they had up their sleeve. But they do have the ball to attack. Wait. Lilo fighting hard for it. Paul James. That optical illusion, it looks as if there's loads of space out there, but by the time the passes are made, just sh sh shuffling across towards that touchline. Scott Otten. Arrive up, White! 
Quality at who speeds there's outside him, inside is Dan Evans, and so is Sam Davis. There's Giles, good tackle by Sean Bennett. This is a lovely run by Giles. David Howells, Fonatia. He's looked dangerous since he's come on, hasn't he? Fonatia and Ardra, they made a difference save, to the Ospreys. Save. Bradley Davis. Blues looking to fan out wide. Is it? The Ospreys okay. going through the forwards initially. There's a little pop for Paul James. Ospreys need to keep the width here. All their players are within the 15s. So really narrow then. <laughs> Picked up by Justin Tipperick. Were yeah. they back ten? Referee no allows six. it to go. They're in right here. If they can shift the ball, they're in. Paul James don't need it. is in anyway, under they're the sticks. The and they didn't need to go wide. And Paul James, well, faint hope for the Ospreys. There's another quick conversion. Narrows that gap. It's time this walk back to halfway from the Blues. Yeah, no need to rush back if you're a Blues. Stroll back. And again, this was... Guys like Fonati and Ardra, they put a bit of energy, a little bit of power to the ball carrying. Just got the Ospreys on the front foot, which the first half they had no front foot ball at all to work with. Tipper quick tap penalty. And like Jamie said, it was on, they could have gone wide, the numbers on wide, but Paul James, he relishes, he doesn't get many tries. He uses his power and just reaches over. Good control by the forearm. He nearly lost it. <laughs> There'd be a moment of panic in Paul James's head there as he reached over, thinking I might have lost this, but did well. It's hard run again. Just those extra few metres they weren't getting early on. Taking back legs. And it's Paul James with a pass. And then Lloyd Ashley. Good hands by Paul James, and he's there to gather the loose ball as well. He's enjoying himself out there. Right on. Very skill. Leave it now. Not quite though. Fonatia. And it's Adron again who's there. Inside ball is the one that Haberfield wanted. Yeah, and he was passes. in a bit of space, but they've lost it to Reen Williams. And it's over. Your own player lost it again, so it'll be no, a Osprey scrum. Over, they've picked their game up. Maybe I the Blues just taking the foot off the front foot with the game one. Yeah, just getting at the wider channels. Good speed by Ardrun, just holding the ball. Needs to look after it one hand. Good cover tackle from Cuthbert, though. Not sure, it's on the fourth man. Can they score three times in ten minutes? I mean, we all saw Barcelona, yeah, Paris Saint Germain a few weeks back. Not uh, going to start having. It's going to be difficult, I think, with a, with a man yeah, down still in the bin. For the Blues, the if the Ospreys can score, okay, they still have a chance. Thank you. But it's, yes, and yeah, 14 for the Ospreys, yeah. they haven't got Messi, Neymar, or Suarez. Okay, <laughs> so I can't see them coming back for this one. But they did settle for two scores yeah. at the moment because that will get them bonus point. They a need bonus point every, absolutely. Absolutely. bonus point. So two, if they get away with this from two with two points. points. Set, they would bite set. your arm off for that at the moment. I've seen the that. Yeah. Straight down and in. 17. Seventeen. Straight in. It's on the four flats. Said it three times. Back up to 15. Coming on the same time as Gareth Anscombe, James Down. In you come, Blues. 
Placing Jaron Hoyata. Yeah, he's played, re yeah, he's he's played really well, Hoyata. Yeah. In the last few weeks, he's played really, really well. And it's what the Blues have lacked, really. Second rows. He's really stepped up the pace over the last couple of weeks. Cuthbert, again, strong running. Navidi. Yeah, and it's two, three metres every carry. Okay. Lloyd Williams on the front foot. Shingler with a dummy inside. Step wide, step. Again, perfectly laid back for Lloyd Williams. You know, the Ospreys are standing still in defence, really. Don't hold it, takes. Yeah, line speed isn't there, and it's allowing the Blues Tackle wide to, to move. attack that gain line every time they have the ball yes, in their sorry, hands. And they're taking full advantage of it, working their way towards that try line once again. Shingler, Alaholo. Sean Bennett. It comes back to Martin's in. point earlier in the half, you know, if, you, if you're not going to compete, you have to come off the line. Mm. Um, and they're doing neither, you know, wouldn't surprise me if the Blues walk in another try. Yeah, here. ball is there, thank you, Ten. A dozen phases already, and now they're within striking distance. Stay Lloyd right. Williams picks out Josh Navidi. Matthew Rees and Rees Gill together. Better defence from the Ospreys, and they've won it. James King. No, no. Now then, can they transfer quickly enough? Because Ellis Jenkins is guarding the wing. Ashley Beck with a little cut inside, and he got his pass to Haberfield. Dan Evans in support. So is Luke Price up to halfway. Dan Evans. Haberfield arrives, but so do Blues defenders. Anscum is back there. Uh, good penalty, Ellis Jenkins. And again, it's the Blues defence that comes out on top, and Ellis Jenkins getting the congratulations, finishing off what Gareth Anscombe had started. Yeah. Oh, we're playing on nine. Great work from um, Ellis Jenkins defensively from the Blues. A cover looks like 35 17 up. What's Ellis Jenkins? Just the bottom of your screen. Makes the cover tackle, gets back to his feet, and again over the ball. Been absolutely outstanding today. On the line, please. Go and step off the line, please. Respect the gap. Blues back row have just been totally dominant today. Nick Williams, Ellis Jenkins, Navidi. Complete package, been absolutely superb. Green Williams leaves Alex Summerhill for the final half dozen minutes. It's another encouraging performance by Green Williams. He's one for the future. He only turned 20 in June. I'd like to see him giving a run at 15. I think that's his position. He's a top prospect. Well, he was unlucky last week, started at 15, but once Scully got injured, Seven. had to go back on the wing. Leave it now, leave it! Shingler, and again, the presence of Cuthbert is always a threat. Even if he doesn't receive the ball, he fixes there. defenders. Yeah, it's good to see his knees. He's come the off seat. his wing today. He got his hands on the ball. Tipperick trying to bring in Giles, but who's there? Ellis Coming Jenkins. Hold, hold. Reskill. Wait. Lloyd Williams had looked up to see where the defenders were. And he is quite happy just to find the touch line. Matt, man of the match is your call. Yeah, so many to choose from from the Blues. You know, like I mentioned Cuthbert, he's been back to his best today. He's been outstanding, looked hungry. Back row for me, Nick Williams, Josh Navidi. But that man there has been absolutely outstanding. Covered every blade of grass, won so many turnovers, 23 tackles.
complete performance from Ellis Jenkins. And his passing game as well, I think he's put some players into space as well. All round game ready for us. Just another number seven off the conveyor belt. They were <laughs> fighting for that place on tour. Yeah. What did the Blues have produced down the years? No, no, I was going to. I didn't want to mention <laughs> that, that? Over. <laughs> So yeah. many about at the minute fighting for that spot, but Sam Davis is in. Yeah, oh, a bit of space at last for Sam Davis, but again the pass wasn't well delivered, well held on to by Fonotia. Haberfield and Ardron arrive, so does Dan Evans. Tried driving the Ospreys on in search of a third try. Ardron, he has made a difference. Haberfield to Otten. But again, that's where they really struggle. Just those close quarters, they haven't been able to get over that game line. Okay, game line, come. the Blues have been able to slow the ball down, and they found it very difficult then to create. Kieran Fonatia has looked impressive as well. Bradley Davis. Scott Otten drives step, on. Step. Collision won by the Ospreys, and there haven't been too good. many of them. But the steal is there again, and the turnover ball is Raymond Lilo with the steal, and Lloyd Williams with the kick. And suddenly, Luke Price is back defending. He's done well. Great tackle from Lloyd Williams. But again, look at the energy from the Blues. Oh no! And it's heartbreaking for the Ospreys yes. to have to trudge all the way back. When you were looking for a score to defend on halfway and regroup, and then they give the ball away too easily. Tricks from Ellis Jenkins, the kick from Stephen Schindler, the race is on. Fonatia, quite happy to see that one going over the touchline with Alex Cuthbert breathing down his neck. Yeah, I just think that last couple of minutes summed up the game for me. Great turnover from Lilo, five metres out from his own line. Great kick from Lloyd Williams. It's just the energy from the Blues. Competing for everything, great skills, Ellis Jenkins. Done a bit of everything today, isn't he? Um, and if that stayed in field, it would have been an interesting chase for Cuthbert, but, but just just been at it more today, the, the Blues, more than the Ospreys. On those 50-50s, a little extra yard of pace. Davis, half break, Lilo. Away now! Halaholo in midfield though, haven't let anything go past them. Giles driven back but bounces back up. Beck <laughs> chopped down by Navidi. He's chased everything. The back row has been superb for the Blues. On a tee out with a dummy. And there he goes. I think he's put his hand up the start from now on, hasn't he? Dan Evans giving chase. Cuthbert and Anscombe back there for the Blues. And that'll do nicely for Alex Cuthbert. That's all he needed to do. But again, just a chase back. Really shows what the Blues have been about this afternoon. Yeah, they have even the hits there, you know. They I think we skill mid flew up, Josh Navidi flying in to make the tackles, the willingness to cover. There he is, Fonatia, really has made a difference. Great with ball in hand. In Ospreys. Good turn of pace as well. There's no way to go for the Ospreys again. Clock's gone red. The Ospreys have to keep on fighting. They have improved, but that Wait. may be because the Blues confident the win was theirs. The opening hour be belonging almost exclusively to the Cardiff Blues. And it's been an outstanding performance by the Blues. Won't have any major influence on their season in the league, but it makes it a very, very uncomfortable last couple of weeks for the Ospreys. One time maybe destined for a home semi-final, now 
fighting to keep their place in the top four because they were outplayed by the Blues who have hit form at the wrong part of the season. Yeah, totally dominant display from the Blues, complete performance, both forwards and backs with and without the ball, totally deserved the victory and the margin of victory doesn't flatter them either. Very an Osprey performance again, it's been an unbelievable collapse really in the last four weeks from the Ospreys and they've got an interesting two games to go but hugely positive steps for the Blues again, are backing up what was a great performance out in Ulster, totally dominant performance today. The Ospreys may have had the last two tries of the game to Dan Evans and Paul James but by then the Blues already had five on the board and the bonus point safe. A bonus point for the Blues, the first win against the Ospreys in seven years, and the Ospreys on the slide and worried. It's finished. Blues 35, Ospreys 17. Phil. Gethin Jenkins, uh, we spoke in Ulster last week. You had the performance, but not quite the result. This week, you went the full Monty. How pleasing is that? Yeah, it's nice to get together when you know, it's been a while since we've beaten the Ospreys. Uh, we came out first half and played some really good stuff. And, uh, you know, they came back strong because you know, they're a quality team. Uh, they managed to hang in there. And if you could put your finger on what was different between last week, the draw, and this week, the, the, the good win, what would it be? Uh, it's hard to put your finger on it. You know, like, again, last week we played some good stuff, and this week we, we carried on with that and uh, came out the blocks quite quick. Um, I suppose they couldn't live with us first half, but um, we managed to get over the line in the end and uh, bring a good performance in, and that's been a problem, I suppose. Bragging rights to you, congratulations. Yes, thank you. Well, they were 21-3 up at half-time, the Blues. You sensed if they scored first in the second, it would be game over, and that's exactly what they did. 44 minutes on the clock, Fao Felice goes over, and then a bit of good fortune ultimately for this one, but brilliant skills. Gareth Anscombe holding on to the ball, and full flight and he gets over the line for a second Blues try in the space of five minutes that put the game to bed the Ospreys didn't give up though they bagged a couple of their own they had the last word Dan Evans went over for their first try in that second half and then Paul James coming onto the pitch to add a bit of experience over the line himself it